Well, hello and welcome to another OpenShift Commons briefing. And today we have my friend and colleague, Paul Lanscaster from the Partner Development Group over at Red Hat and the Cloud Platform BU. And we're going to talk about something that I bet people have heard a lot about, but don't know really the origins of um, and what the details are behind it. Cloud Native Network Functions, or CNFs, um, which get misspoken as container native functions or cloud native functions. But today, you know, Diane will try not to alliterate the, uh, the acronym and let Paul introduce himself and tell us about um, how all of these things came to be and um, hopefully give us some insights in how you too can build some uh, cloud native network functions um, and work with us uh, here at Red Hat. So Paul, take it away. Thank you very much for coming today. No problem. Thanks, Diane. So yeah, so um, I'm going to talk a little bit today about uh, cloud native network functions running on OpenShift, but more in generally um, running on Kubernetes. Um, you know, we at Red Hat have had a lot of experience with this stuff. Uh, and, uh, you know, hopefully the presentation will make things a little bit more clear about how we, how we look at these particular workloads running on top of, uh, of OpenShift. Um, and what we have done both in the open and with our customer base to sort of make OpenShift and therefore Kubernetes um, more real and more uh, powerful to run your applications, your network applications uh, on, okay? So, so I guess let's start uh, first of all with defining what exactly a cloud native network function is. Um, so a so, uh, little bit of credit to Legato here. I pulled this uh, uh, from their, their site. Uh, if you go to ligato.io, you'll, you'll see an explanation of what this is. But at a high level, right, um, a cloud native network function is simply an application uh, but it's a specific application, a network network function um, that is designed and implemented to run inside of containers, right? So uh, cloud native network functions inherit all of the cloud native architectural and operational principles, including the you know, Kubernetes lifecycle management and agility and resilience and observability. Um, and, and they are, I mean, they're built to deploy and run on top of Kubernetes, right? So uh, it's a very distinct type of application, and there are some things that around tuning and specifics in, in building it and best practices that we can talk a little bit about as we go on, and maybe I can give you some examples of. But think about this as an application. There are some specifics around the application, but it is a type of application that is built on Kubernetes. It uses Kubernetes principles. Um, there are some specific tunings that you'll want to have, and in fact, we've built into OpenShift for you. So at a high level, that's what a CNF is, okay? So um, in terms of the journey that the community and the partners and the service providers themselves are on, it is not an uncommon journey from other cloud-based applications, right? So. Uh, very similar to other applications in the cloud. It started as what you would call bespoke hardware that's very verticalized, especially in this industry, um, to more monolithic applications that ran as virtual machines. Eventually those things got sort of broken out and ran on uh, more, uh, uh, horizontal platforms such as OpenStack, where, by the way, we've had a lot of experience with that as well. And then, you know, ultimately are, are making their way, or have made their way and still are making their way towards being cloud native. Okay, so that's the network functions or NFV journey that a lot of these folks are on. Um, hopefully a lot of you folks that are on the call today are well acquainted with this. and and. What, what's driving it? I mean, what's driving it more than anything, right? So and there are a couple things. I mean, obviously the idea of uh, a next generation networks um, around the world are, are really driving this, right? So both the uh, CSPs and as well as the, the media uh, players all want to get to the same place, which is 
to be able to run applications just like you would in any other cloud, okay? To be able to install those applications, to manage the life cycles around those applications. I mean, really, to, to, to just make it easier to operate and deliver new services. It's the same model that really any other uh, company's journey to the cloud is, is undertaking. Um, again, there are some specifics around the way that uh, the needs of, of these applications, but this is what's driving it, right? So 5G, it's a, it's a big buzzword that I think probably everybody on this, this session has heard about. Um, but these are the things that are, the, the, the transformation to 5G, the transformation to uh, what we call digital service providers is driving a lot of this in the ecosystem, okay? So why cloud native then? Why, um, why do we want to get to this part of the journey? Well, it's about all the things I just mentioned in the previous slide. It's about making it easier for you to operate, easier for you to upgrade, easier for you to manage, you know, easier to roll out new services. The entirety of the story of, of Kubernetes is, is uh, and, and cloud native applications in general applies to this. I mean, we, uh, we as a company have been engaged in this for, for quite some time. I'm sure that all of you are aware that, you know, we are, uh, you know, one of the biggest contributors to Kubernetes and we're big believers in this whole thing. But in the whole world of telecommunications and 5G, it's the same sort of principles apply, right? It's ease of delivery, uh, ease of rolling out new services, ease of upgrading those services. All of those principles are, are why folks want to have cloud native network functions and, and uh, run those on their new 5G networks. So to that end, uh, Red Hat has been very active in a lot of upstream um, communities, not just the Kubernetes or the CNCF communities, but many different communities, including Linux Foundation networking. Um, you know, I, I mean, the list is, is, is very long, the open air interface, the ORAN community. Um, and we see lots of our customers participating in these communities. And this is a, just a for instance of um, a customer, a very large customer, China, China Mobile, uh, who who has been investing in in uh, helping build what is ultimately going to land, you know, ultimately for for a lot of different service providers out there, ways to deliver these applications, um, you know, using open source technologies, right? So. Uh, you can read more about this, I, uh, the, uh, the actual use case itself. I mean, you just simply Google 5G in China Mobile. There's a lot of data there. But in particular, within the LFN community, the Linux Foundation networking community, you can see a lot of the work that China Mobile has done. And this is across various parts of their network, including radio and uh, AI and, and their entire ecosystem. This is one of the partners that we, partners, customers, uh, players in the service provider community that we see oftentimes. Um, and so we have, uh, you know, we've worked with them. Uh, and ultimately what we've done as far as putting together this, this model for 5G uh, cloud native, you know, service providers like China Mobile will be adopting and have adopted. So maybe I could talk a little bit about uh, some of the architecture. And this is not an uncommon architecture that you would find to, to many services that are being built out in a global uh, way. Um, but this is very specific to, uh, to network functions and some core functions and some uh, edge functions that you, you might want to sort of build out your architecture to look like this, right? So, um, you know, we work with many tier one service providers around the world, and this is kind of an example of an architecture you might see out there. So, uh, where there are, there are core packet processing functions, 
there's an SDN, if not multiple SDN layers, and then there are edge sites out there with applications uh, that are closer to radio towers. So making it multiple levels, you've got the radio tower is the farthest edge, you've got a centralized uh, uh, office edge, and then you've got your data center edge. And all of those areas are sort of being cloudified, if you will, um, and then becoming cloud native as far as uh, this particular architecture is concerned. So this is kind of an example of what we did um, or what we are doing in the community. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about the POC that we did. So a couple of years back now, we started working on something called VCO, uh, which is uh, short for Virtual Central Office. This programmatically has gone through, well, not programmatically, but technically has gone through a couple of different iterations. We, of course, had a virtual machine-based one, but now, uh, as of even a couple of years ago, had moved on to something that was cloud native. And for those of you who may have attended KubeCon in the last in-person KubeCon, which I think was in San Diego a few years back, uh, but I'm sure <laughs> folks will correct me if I'm wrong, you may have seen a demo that we did, um, which I'm going to talk about a little bit today, that, that has actually been updated since then. But as far as I know, um, it was the very first ever live demo of an end-to-end cloud native 5G network where uh, several folks internally that I work with, folks like Hanan Garcia and Azar Syed, uh, put together an ecosystem of players that I'm about to talk about here in uh, different locations where we showed an end-to-end -end video call that was completely based on OpenShift. All of it was done in the open. And these were the locations that we, um, that we actually used, right? So we had a location for radio, that was in Europe. We had a location for the control plane and core, which was in Montreal. And then we also had another location for radio and core, uh, which was based in San Diego. And this made up our global network for delivering this POC. This was the architecture uh, for the POC, right? So all of the functions themselves broken out for core uh, as well as radio. You can see how that sort of looked here and who some of the players were. Uh, our partners like Kaloum and Lenovo uh, in, in Montreal, as well in San Diego. And then what the technologies uh, they use were based on. So it was, you know, obviously Red Hat Enterprise Linux and Red Hat Enterprise Linux Core OS, as well as, as, well as OpenShift. And this is the design for the radio pieces of it. So, you know, we, we were unable to obviously uh, get any um, spectrum for this demo. So we did this all in a Faraday cage, but nevertheless, conceptually, it's exactly the same as what you might find as an implementation, or at least it gives you a vision as to what you might find as far as the implementation is concerned. Um, and this is, these are the partners who we build it, up, build it out with, right? So again, Lenovo, A10, uh, Ultron provided us with the 5G core, Comscope for the remote radio units, and then we had a set of end user handsets, which you can see over there on the left, uh, 5G phones. Um, this was the core design in Montreal. Again, partners like Turnium, A10, uh, Ultron, Kaloum, and Lenovo were involved. And uh, you can see how we stitched this together. Um, again, it was operating across Europe, Montreal, and San Diego. This is the European edge point. Um, again, you can see the open air interface, folks. So open air interface is another uh, upstream project that we're working on. They aim to uh, sort of make standard uh, interfaces for radio uh, available across open source, and hopefully that's going to gain adoption. This is the software stack that we use, right? So it was all running on bare metal. Um, well, not all of it. Some of it was running in a public cloud. But for a lot of the CNFs, it was running on bare metal with, with Red Hat Enterprise Linux and Red Hat Enterprise Linux Core OS. 
uh, OpenShift container platform running on top of that. A lot of the cloud native uh, uh, applications and projects we were leveraging, all the ones that you can see there on the left. And then for the public cloud pieces, you can see some of the um, functions were actually run there. Uh, and then, of course, the list of partners that we had, folks like A10, Ultron, and the ones that I mentioned before, ultimately making this happen. Uh, let's see. Okay. So, what did we learn from this? Well, we learned, first of all, that it's possible to deliver cloud native network functions and build real services using the stuff from this POC. Um, why do we look at it uh, running on top of OpenShift? Of course, you know, you know Red Hat believes that we have the most uh, enterprise ready um, Kubernetes distro out there. And we look to the community to help us make, make it better, frankly. Um, so this is the work that we've been involved in in terms of uh, you know, the ecosystem, uh, the CNCF, the LFN, and uh, making all of this work uh, available ultimately to our service provider customers who run who want to run their cloud native functions on top of OpenShift. So this is what the bare metal deployment looked like. Um, don't have to get into too much of the detail here, but you can see uh, how we set up real time and had uh, uh, FPGA cards. So these are some of the things that I talked about earlier that are little tweaks that. Uh, are expected from folks in the service provider industry. Red Hat includes operators that take care of these tunings for you. I mean, things like the performance add-on operator or the SRIOV networking operator are in Red Hat's uh, distribution of OpenShift, um, Red Hat's product OpenShift, rather. Uh, and, you know, when you turn these things on and run them, that, that, that is a best practice way for you to run your containerized network or cloud native network functions. So I've got a little bit of a demo here I can go through. Um, Diane, I'm not exactly sure how much time we have, but. Uh, we've, we've got plenty of time and I would love yeah. to see this. Um, so uh, let's run it. Um, and Chris, if you're listening, to, let us know if, is there a sound to this or is, are you gonna talk us through it? I think there is sound to this, um, but uh, let me yeah, take, take take it, let it rip. Yeah, I know these things; these demos are hard to put together live, so I'm totally okay with a video. Yeah, so let me uh, let me just see here. Trying to assemble all the pieces and parts. Yeah, so obviously this is us uh, and our team logging into and and building this entire demo uh, using OpenShift. Um, uh, I, I guess the sound isn't coming through for some reason, so maybe I could talk a little bit to it. But what you're seeing is really the back end of how we built this entire um, network. Again, it's a, it's a little bit of an older version of OpenShift, and a lot of the uh, innovation we've done since then helps our operators and, and the community uh, take advantage of things like I mentioned, uh, the SRI, the operator, the performance out on operator. But uh, uh, this demo sort of essentially shows how we built that. Now, uh, um, I think, Diane, maybe it's not as quite as good because the uh, the sound isn't coming through for some reason, so. Yeah, the sound's not coming through, but um, the visuals are fine. The, what you're seeing here is, is essentially the pieces that we uh, build it with, including all the functions. Uh, running on on OpenShift, um, we you know have brought those together here. So I I think uh, maybe this is a little too um, gosh I, I think we should probably skip on this because the sound is in the in the background and it's not uh, yeah um, we can yeah. we can we can. Yeah, if you, do you have a link to the, the video? Is the video? I, I do have a link to the video. I can send it out later. And, uh, if you just put it in the chat, Chris Short can run the video um, and play it 
pull it we can pull it down but um don't worry about it just go on to where you're at in in the slides and we'll okay. I'll, I'll, you if you give me the video and anyone who's listening i will um throw the video into the edited version of this so that you can hear the play-by-play -play. i will do that yeah i'll send that send that on sorry uh, apologies about that um I'm not exactly sure why it wasn't working but you know ultimately it talks about things about how we set it up of course um this is a lot of detail on it. Uh, um, another community that we've been working on is the Multis community. So this is all about the plugins or, or the uh, meta plugin to CNI. Um, for instance, this is another thing that we can set up very easily using operators in OpenShift. Uh, so these are all of the partners that we had involved, as, as I mentioned at, at the sort of the top of this. Uh, it was folks like A10, Ultron, the list goes on here. Um, but the projects were in the LFN community and the OPNFE community. Okay, so um, that at a high level is the entirety of the presentation. And mm -hmm. if folks have some questions, I'm happy to do my best to answer those now. What's interesting to me, if you put that slide back up on the screen, um, in 2019, we had China Mobile come um, and give a presentation basically on these topics, the early edition of it, um, at, in Barcelona in Spain. Mm -hmm. And then I, was, I, I couldn't find it, but I, I will find the, the talk you were talking about at um, uh, the San Diego uh, Coup, CoupCon um, mm -hmm. in 2020. The evolution of this. Um, this whole thing into something that's actually a uh, program now uh, for certifying container uh, native network functions. You know, it, it's been, yeah. I mean, we've been watching this transition and for almost, I've been watching, I'm sure you've been watching it much longer because you've been in the telco space waiting for this yeah. all to evolve. But for me, it sort of hit um, in 2019, when um, the gentleman from um, China Mobile came and stood up on stage, and he was saying, waving his hands, and he had the most deep dive um, thing, you know, it, it was sort of mind-blowing, the, the schematics that he was doing. Yeah. And what, what you're showing now um, is so much more, I mean, it's it's comprehensible, the, you know, that the dyers, and, the, and I think that's what these container-native... Yeah network functions have done is they've taken the complexity out of deploying this um, and cleaned it up so it's reproducible and automatable in a way that even in 2019 was um, you know somebody's dream you know? well I mean I think that is the case right so a lot of the work that we're finding in the in the ecosystem now in terms of the partners I mean they're definitely make, doing a lot of work to make their applications much more easily deployable on OpenShift. And a lot of that has to do with uh, their uh, belief in things like Kubernetes operators, um, the operator framework, and, and building operators to do things like not only the, the day one sort of install and upgrade stuff, but ultimately how they operationalize their application, so the day two things, um, and all of the additional functionality you can build using an operator. So uh, so there's that, and not only that, but what we've built into our platform from an operator perspective. So a lot of the learnings that we've taken from having customers that are tier one service providers around the world, we've actually put those tunings into our product using operator concepts, right? Using literal operators, like I keep mentioning, uh, the performance add-on operator and the SRIOV operator to make it that much easier for anyone who's interested to deploy, build, deliver their cloud-native functions on top of OpenShift. I do have uh, an additional deck which talks about our certification and why we think uh, you know, CNF certification is important at Red Hat. I can talk about it at a, at a high level uh, as well, but we do have a program, right? And the program sort of looks at a couple of different areas. Um, one area is, of course, how you've actually built your containers. The other area is how you've built your automation, right? So a lot of folks are choosing Helm, but Red Hat are big believers in, in Kubernetes operators, obviously. And the third area is how we actually test a, an ecosystem 
um, of different types of applications and how they should best perform on top of OpenShift. And, and we've donated some of the, that testing and those concepts uh, back to the community through various GitHubs, and I can you know, share those with folks um, after the call or after today's talk. But we're welcoming folks in to sort of um, add their test cases and talk to us about those, or you know, even engage with us to talk to us what's uh, most important to them so we can even make these programs more meaningful ultimately to the customers. So I think, and that's the other thing that that's, um, I'm hoping to do um, with you over t time um, is to, to get some of these folks who have built um, a certified cloud native network functions. Yeah. I'm going to do the CNF yeah. full, full on now that I'm, I'm going to memorize it today, right. what it all stands for. But um, is to get some of them on to talk about um, the use cases and why they built it and how they built it, because I think that's also an interesting aspect. And the more of these that we get, I think somebody told me the other day we had around 40 to 45 of them in the, in the you know, already certified uh, out there. But I'm sure there are lots more um, use cases and different things that we can um, do. And so the more people talk about, you know, what it took to build them, to containerize these things and, um, and get them tested, I think that'll be um, an interesting thing for the community to, to learn about. Um, and also, you know, how some of these things are being used in, in practice too. That's, I think, some really, I mean, mostly what I've seen is, um, aside from your short demo today, um, is really the China Mobile story. Um, and it would be really interesting to see some of the you know some of the other stories as well so yeah um we, we certainly hope to be able to bring some of the partners or a lot of the partners that we've worked with uh, to to openship commons and have them talk about the work that they've done there's some very specific work depending upon the use case that probably is is very interesting to uh, to the attendees um Obviously, if you know you're a radio application, it's a lot different than if you're a say a core application. And we can talk maybe to some of those 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 partners. I mean, the the partners that we're working with on the radio side are partners like um, Altio Star, Parallel Wireless, uh, Ericsson, and the list kind of goes on. And then on the core side, it's very similar. Your Affirm Networks of the world, your Maveneers of the world, Casa Systems. Uh, Ericsson, uh, et cetera. So, um, yeah, we I hope to be able to bring those folks to uh, to this uh, discussion um, in the future, and they can talk a little bit about what they've done and how they've done it using OpenShift. So, where can they go? Um, and maybe this is a, a share your screen again on the Red Hat site world to find out more about the certified program. That's I think yeah. the key key thing that. Um, so if you're not in the certified program yet, or if you're just getting started, um, there's kind of a, a, a sort of a getting started page. I think I stumbled on it the other day um, when I was trying to figure out what all this was about. Yeah. So um, so maybe I'll uh, show that real quickly. <clears throat> Let me uh, just uh, reshare my screen for just a moment. Let me know if you folks can see this. Yep. Okay. That's so, the upcoming event. Well, this, uh, so this uh, should be, I should be showing access.redhat.com right now. It is indeed, yes. Okay. So the first, the very first step for anyone who's interested in partnering with Red Hat um, and helping, uh, having us help them build their about native network functions uh, to best practices on OpenShift is for them to join the um, technology partner program, right? So you can go to access.redhat.com slash join. There is, there's a, there should be uh, two uh, options there. One option is the technology partner program. And once you join the, the technology partner program, that will allow you access to all of our products and services. Uh, including OpenShift, right? Um, it will allow you to do things like, uh, you know, grab subscriptions, etc. But that is is where you want to start. Now there is a um, 
There is a workflow which I can share with everyone on how to go through this journey. It's a Git book and maybe I'll actually, let me just share it with folks now um, in the chat window for just a second. Uh, here is the guide for how partners can start the certification process with us. All right, now I'm gonna put that in the chat window for, for folks to take a look Got at. It. Got it. All right. There, there is one question, but it might be slightly off topic. Um, uh, and it's coming in from um, one, like either YouTube land or somewhere. Uh, what are the benefits of OpenShift serverless and OpenShift service mesh? Um, I think that's a bit off topic um, for today, but I don't know from, from my perspective. I think that's not something in this bailiwick. Yeah, I mean, I think serverless and, and service mesh are a couple of, you know, obviously very important pieces in the CNCF world, and it's also things that we uh, ship with, with OpenShift. I'm not the expert on serverless or, or service mesh. Um, but I would say that, you know, we could probably um, guide you in the right way there. And there's obviously some PMs that we yeah, work with. There, there's a ton of, there's a ton of other OpenShift Commons briefings on both of those topics that we can, yeah. we can shoot you through and, uh, um, and get you to. But I think that's a little um, out of scope for today's conversation, uh, just to let um, Asha, Akesh um, know that, Chris, that would be um, okay. Um, and we definitely will cover that in, in multiple times and we'll cover it in future talks as well. So I, I think that the, the interesting thing for me is, and, and I'm going to go back to this evolution from 2019 to, you know, here we are in 2021 and it's, you know, highly operator focused and there's certification programs in there. What do you see as the next big thing um, in this road roadmap? Um, what's beyond... Um, you know, getting your, your function well, certified. Uh, what's the, I would what's say, the yeah, I mean, uh, the, so we, uh, we've partnered with folks like Intel uh, to put together hosted labs where you can come and understand uh, best practices with us. Um, you know, uh, you, as a partner, uh, you may want to do that because, of course, we can provide a lot of coaching on that. Um, but in terms of the next big thing, I mean, I think it's it's happening now, right? It's it's what's going on in the world around 5G, and a lot of this is pushing um, the next level of of how these uh, these applications are being delivered, right? And and so the service providers, you know, tier one service providers, even tier two service providers, are all sort of going through this transition. Um, and that, you know, ultimately is driving the next the next level. I mean, hopefully the next level will be continued uh, to be open. There are projects that are even looking at uh, how to open uh, more of the radio bits uh, or radio applications, projects like the ORAN and the Open Air Interface, which I mentioned earlier. So I think the adoption of those things and, you know, the increased adoption of, of just open ways to deliver these applications, I think, is, is frankly the future of, of telecommunications networks in 5G and beyond. Yeah. It, it's pretty amazing to me how much of this is being done in the open, too, because telcos, you know, prior to sort of, I don't know. Yeah. I don't like even 10 years ago or five years ago, you weren't seeing telcos playing well together in, uh, at least I wasn't, in open source spaces. They may have had proprietary found foundations and things and done stuff yeah. together in, you know, in, in industry backed initiatives, but they weren't really huge open source players. And, and now you're seeing them, you know, all you know, coming together, whether it's in the Linux Foundation or in, you know, the Cloud Native Foundation. <coughs> and that is really a huge eye-opener for me. And I think that's also helping a lot drive these things to be much faster in the evolution. Um, so it's going to I mean, be I think you nailed it uh, there, Diane. I mean, <clears throat> a lot of the vendors, <coughs> excuse me, a lot of the vendors who are, or have been um, supplying 
the telecommunications service providers for many years uh, are now starting to realize that this is the trend. And so all of these vendors are, are now starting to collaborate in the open. And I think that is, you know, that's the sea change that everybody wants, right? It's the sea change that the customer wants. And it's also the, it's the evolution of how we all work together. And so we're starting to find the various players, um, you know, working in things like ORAN, Open Air Interface, LFN, I mean, the list of projects just go, Kubernetes, uh, Maltus, um, the list, <coughs> excuse me, goes on and on there. Uh, and I mean, I think this is the future of what's going to be happening. Yeah, it's I mean, happening uh, now, but it's going to continue. Yeah. Because you know, there's a huge initiative inside of um, Red Hat around telcos is you know a coalescing of different technologies. Um, I mean, you're focused on one area, but there's a, you know there's another team. I've been working with Bill Wright and Lisa Kaywood around this enterprise neurosystems um, initiative around leveraging what a few um, what's the Mexican telco's name? I can't think Eric of it. Mobile. Yeah, thank you, uh, yeah. Mobile. Uh, thank you. Uh, uh, have been doing, and they're open sourcing all their AI ops for you know automating and and the the back end side of um, the telco operations. And you know, you you know, ten years ago, even five years ago, you weren't you wouldn't see this. And this is just um, I think. And, and we see it in every industry, so it's it's not new. But the embracing of you know the open source development model and the understanding that um, doing it and innovating together benefits everybody. And also, I think it makes it easier for um, end users and customers to adopt and trust um, the services, so they're not dealing with one big locked-in proprietary um, entity. So I think it's a it gives a, a better level of trust that, you know, maybe they can move um, and play in different spaces and aren't as locked in, but it yeah, benefits I mean, everybody. Look, the, the, the uh, you know, the mobile network service providers are, uh, they're in partnership with this next generation of applications, which are going to be able to, or, or are taking advantage of things like, you know, the edge or the provider edge or whatever you want to call it, the telco edge. And there are all kinds of applications that are going to be running out there that are going to require or or, or best going to become um, meaningful when they're using things like AI, um, whether that's for industrial use cases in manufacturing, whether it's for the, you know, energy world. It, it, I mean, in general, these things are referred to sort of at a high level as private 5G, where the network is extended, not necessarily using a public spectrum, but a private network um, all the way out to like retail facilities, uh, you know, in the energy world and mining. Um, and, and the service providers are a part of this and, this, and the applications that live on the network are all a part of this. So, Again, a lot of those use cases ultimately are driving changes as well. In addition to the fact that everybody on their handset wants to have the best possible experience, there's these other use cases that are sort of adding on top of that to drive what's the change in, um, uh, in telecommunications. So it's gonna be an interesting ride this next couple of years, I think, watching watching this space and seeing what comes out of the telcos space as they learn um, more and more about, you know, the power of collaborating here. And I think the stuff that your team has been doing, um, you were working with a couple of architects, um, you know, the, the, and just in the work that you've been doing, but Gil, who's also on our team, is doing a lot of stuff with Verizon, and yep. you know, there's you know, Mark's doing a lot of partners. So it's really interesting to watch um, how the partner ecosystem is evolving, and um, the best practices, and getting the labs set up, and getting all this stuff yeah. available, and the role of Red Hat as the vendor. Or, and partner for all of these folks who are collaborating, helping them, you know, do the testing, you know, get the best practices in place, make sure it's all secure. We really, 
Um, it is, it's been really very interesting to see the speed at which this change is happening. And um, I'm really pleased that you came and explained what all of this was and what we were doing. That was pretty cool today to get that yeah. story in the background. It's interesting that you mentioned best practices. I'm gonna put another uh, link into uh, the chat for folks, but this is a document that we spent a lot of time on with, um, uh, with Verizon in particular. And it's a roadmap, it's a very in-depth and detailed roadmap on how to best build your cloud native functions for OpenShift. It's 60 plus pages of very deep technical and engineering information uh, on how you can do that. And so, you know, it's a PDF. I would encourage you guys to go grab it, uh, take a look at it, and, you know, ask us if you have any questions. But this is really uh, the culmination of work that we've done with, again, tier one operators like Verizon. I will definitely add that in. Um, it's, yeah, it's, ver it's the version 1.21 from October. That's, yeah, that, I saw that come by, and I have to say I ignored it because it was huge and yeah. too deep. It was it one of those mind-blowing things, like, I'm never going to get the hardware to yeah. play with any of this. And I think that's sure. the beauty yeah. beauty of having um, having you on to be able to explain this, because it's like most of us, we hear about this stuff, but we don't have, you know, this, you know, this is this is a big buck lab set up. So I know this yeah. is not your home lab thing that you're going to do um, with OKD or something. Yeah, this is not POC stuff. This is definitely... Uh, this is commitment. This and, is real um, yeah, no, I've, I've heard you guys bandy about some price tags for these labs, and I'm like, okay, mm, yeah, yeah. out of my little open source OKD home lab uh, budget here. But um, it really, I'm, I'm grateful that you came and you spent the time today and um, and you you shared the stories with us. I'm really looking forward to you kicking off a series with some of the partners to, to tell us about their journeys and what they're doing on the edge and in telco and, and how this is working. And what I really think is that some of the, we should get um, the open air folks and um, yeah. the other folks, the each of them, folks, them to come in to tell, you know, give sort of an update on where they're at with their projects and where they're going, um, you know, what the roadmap is and where, you know, how to contribute in the upstream too. So I think there's there's a lot of content here that we can tease out um, and in the coming months to, to really um, showcase some of this because, you know, we've come a long way since the Barcelona, Spain, uh, China mobile talk um, that, yeah. that I gave that kind of was like, whoa, this is really complicated. I'm not sure I'm going to get, you know, and the and you could see sometimes, you know, the, the diagrams were like packed in every inch of his slide. And he was he did a wonderful job of it, um, and especially in the time allotted. But you could see where the complexity has really um, the operator um, ecosystem has really helped simplify a lot of things. And so that's, I think, the other piece of the puzzle is the other technologies, Kubernetes and maybe service mesh and serviceless and all of these other things start to come into play. Simplifying the complexity of where we are at, even just in 2019, over the coming um, months will be really um, what I'm looking forward to seeing, hearing more about and where where people can contribute in the upstream. Sure. And if you're, if you definitely, if anyone's watching this and listening, and you're interested in, you know, getting on board in the labs or getting your, you know, learning more about the best practices or getting certified for OpenShift, calls the person to reach out to. Um, yeah, maybe I put should I put my email address for folks to? Yeah. Yeah, share your share your thank you slide there with that or your email address or anything. I'll just put my email address in there. All right, and I, I will throw that. Um, yeah, P Landcast without yep. the ER on the end of it, at redhat.com. Um, and we will um, leave it at that for today. And thank you and definitely have you back because um, it isn't, it's still pretty complex. There there are some pieces of that. Um, that it is kind of, for sure, yeah. Yeah, like the Maltus piece, you know, you had yeah. one slide and I'm like, that's a day. <laughs> that's a day yeah. of talks. Hey. I've sat in Maltus talks, that's. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> There's plenty of information there, that's correct. And there's plenty more. So if you're interested in this topic, let us know if there's an aspect of this topic that you want to hear more about. Um, reach out to me or to Paul, and um, we will definitely try and schedule a briefing on it. Um, and at the very least, find a resource to help you get your questions answered. So Paul, 
Um, thanks for today. Uh, lovely view out your window back yeah. there. Um, I'm liking that. The Empire State Building. Empire I State know you. I know you're not really there, yeah. but um, I wish we could be. So hopefully soon we'll be doing this in person. So take care all, and um, we'll talk to you all soon. Thank you, Diane.